So in this short video I want to explain what markers are and what they can be used for and where they can help you to improve your workflow in Cubase. So markers are basically what the name says. They help you to navigate and show you a visible position in your track so that you can find out really easy where you are or where you want to go. That's probably not a problem at all if you know the tune really well or if it is not that long. But otherwise markers are really helpful. So at first you would need a marker track. You can just put it in here like every other track with a right click or in your separate put track in window which you can also find if you press the T button. Of course you can put in more than one marker track if needed. So if you created a marker track you can now start and insert the markers. This you can do in four different ways. You could use the pencil tool and just click wherever you want to have a marker. The second way is pretty much the same than the first, but you can use your object selection tool as well. And if you hover over the market track and press the alt button, you will get the pencil as long as you press the alt button and then you can insert markers wherever you click. The next way would be to use your cursor line. So for example, if you play back your track and you say, well, right now here is the point where I want to insert a marker, you just press the stop button and then use the insert key of your keyboard. So wherever your cursor line goes, if you press the insert key, a marker appears. That will be also really practical. Like in the beginning, you would listen to your song. You could jump somewhere like this is the area where I want to go and you just play your song. And while it playbacks, you hit insert and so on and so on. So like that, you could mark the important parts of your tune. And the fourth way is pretty much the same as the third, but you can use these buttons over here. So right now my song is still playing back and I say I want a marker here and I just click on the insert marker button and a new marker will appear wherever my cursor line is and I use this button. So as you can see, all your markers are visible over here in your inspector and you can just click to any of your markers and your cursor line will jump immediately to exact that place. So that's the main reason you would use markers to navigate really effective in your project. So right now they just are called one, two, three, four, and so on. That is of course helpful and maybe enough for you, but you could also rename them, which would make sense if you now realize, oh, I need one more, for example, here, and you put it in, then it will be one and six and then two. So that would make probably less sense. But if you click any marker and you go to your info line, then you can just put a name in and the marker will be named that and you will exactly know what you meant. You could also for scoring videos or if you do a recording for a radio play 
and they probably don't have something like verse or chorus, then you could use these to get additional information as well, like You could put in lyrics or other information that would help you to navigate and find out what you're working on. Of course, normally you would probably name them like this. So if you want to navigate now in your project, you could use the function that I showed before, you just would go to any of your numbers and click and your cursor would jump there immediately. The other way would be you use your keyboard shortcuts to navigate through your project by pressing B or N and then you can jump to the next cursor or the one before. There is another possibility to work with markers in a really very helpful way. So for example, if you want to set a loop, it's really easy if you click on a event and you set your locators to that event you can just create a loop wherever you set your locators to. So if your events are the perfect length, then this might be a really good solution. Of course, you could go like you click anywhere in your timeline and you set your locators left right of course you could go like this and draw in the part that would also be possible but if you for example want to work with loops that are all the same length and you want to do it several times then it probably would be interesting for you to use cycle markers so cycle markers are basically two normal markers, but they are tied together with a line. Cycle markers you can put in like this. And you see it created a cycle marker exactly to the length of my locators. So if you would set your locators to any length and click on cycle marker, it will put in a cycle marker beginning, which you can see here, and cycle marker end, which you can see here. You can, of course, adjust the length of your cycle marker just by dragging the end or beginning to the left or right. So what should you do now with these cycle markers? You could, for example, set your locators really easy to a certain length by just double clicking the cycle marker. So if you put it anywhere and you want to set your locators to this length because you want to do a mix down of a part or you want to zoom in on that part like so, then it's really easy to do so by using the cycle markers. Just double click it and zoom to that length. You can also do this with one single click and it goes like this, you go to zoom, you select your marker and click on it and the length of that marker will be shown zoomed perfectly to your project window.
If you have a track now and it's not made of different events or the events are not set to your grid or they have uneven lengths so 1 and 5 and 3 and 13 bars or whatever then it would not be practical to use the solution to click anywhere and set your locators if you want to have let's say 6 or 8 bars in length. For that you could create a cycle marker for four or eight bars and move that around. Then you can always have the perfect length. I sometimes create two or three different cycle markers with different length and you can see how long it is here in your info line. So you just click the marker and I create one that is 8 bars and one that is 16 bars. Because if I work on projects with, for example, a score and they say, well, the part starts here in 29 and then it goes on for 16 bars, which is quite normal, then I just have to set my marker to bar 29 and I know exactly how long that part will be. I can double click it, then I have my range selected and I know exactly where this part starts or ends. If I want to work on this with a loop, I could just do so. And if I need a 16 bar loop somewhere else, I can just move this marker there double click it and I have a 16 bar loop set up exact at the right location. Also sometimes it's helpful to count bars with these markers. It's really easy if you like wanna have 16 bars, okay that goes up to here and again 16 bars goes up to here and again 16 bars goes up to here or something like that. Or even if you say, well, it starts in bar 17 and it has to be forty bars long, you don't have to count up here. You just drag your cycle marker and you can see how long it is. You can zoom in to your cycle markers by using this zoom button, but you can also do it with a key shortcut, which is double clicking sets your locators to the cycle marker and double clicking with Alt zooms in on this marker. like so. If you want to jump to a marker and you have your inspector closed, you can see your markers here in show. You have two cycle markers, you have all your markers and you have a zoom function. If you go to show and click on any, your cursor line will jump to that marker or if it is a cycle marker which you can see with the brackets then it will jump to the beginning of that marker. So two more things I want to share with you is you can see I have my markers set up here and they have tiny lines in the color of my market track. If you right click your market track and say show these line over my whole project, you can see it anywhere. So if you have a lot of tracks 
and you scroll down so that you cannot see your market track anymore, you can still see the lines of the market tracks. And one more thing is in the latest version of Cubase, you can also have global tracks and these are up here. So if you activate it, you can see a tiny track at the top of your editor appears and this track is now activated in your key editor window. So I just have one global track, which is a market track, and it shows me my markers in my key editor window on top, so I can navigate easier without having to close my window all the time just to know where I am. So in my key editor window, I can now see the markers as well and navigate just by double clicking them. The exact same way as here in your project window. So that's it. I hope you found these informations helpful and can now navigate better in your project.